I'm Brittany. Woo! This is Sheely N, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things. Today we continue our journey, trek, kind of crawl through Heaven Official's Blessing, Volume 7. Uh, we ended on the, uh, the big reveal, basically. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is one of, if not the big reveal of if there's another reveal that even remotely equals what we found out at the end of the last reading stream then i am completely unprepared and you should not tell me that that's coming <clears throat> sorry for the late start just about everything went wrong for me last night uh i didn't get enough sleep and what i did get was awful um, I woke up this morning and my shoulder decided to revolt. And so that has been hurting and aching and all of that jazz. And then um, it was, no matter what I did last night, no matter how many times I adjusted the thermostat, it was still just this side of too cold for my throat. So my throat had a time last night as well. But I have very caffeinated tea, I have taken ibuprofen, and I plan on having a constant stream of hot tea the entire time. So aside from taking probably a small break around somewhere in the middle so I can get more tea that, that will be hot and not like stone cold by the end like it usually is, other than that, it's, it's our, our usual program, our regular programming, because I was not about to cancel this stream that's just not gonna happen it's it's just not no mm -mm, mm -mm. not in about a million fucking years because here's the thing and um massive spoilers will be talked about here in about five seconds um here's the thing about the reveal the reveal made me think about a couple of things before we dive in <coughs> one I mentioned, I can't, I don't really remember if it was volume six or volume five, but I went on a little bit of a tangent a while back about certain themes that were popping up that were really interesting to me. And I kind of had an inclination that it could maybe go in a certain direction. And then I guess we kind of either stopped talking about those thematic elements as this as the story went on it kind of fell by the wayside and i was like well maybe that's just something and i'm deliberately not telling you what those th themes are um and i was like well maybe mxtx just brought those up as one of the many things that have been brought up through this series but it's not part of like the point of the series and now thanks to the reveal of who white no face is i now think that's exactly where we're going so if you remember that very specific tangent i went on you know but i don't want to say it because i know we have people who are reading along with me and i don't want to do the thing where it's like i have a theory and then it winds up being a spoiler and all that jazz so i'm being vague on purpose but that was one of the first things that occurred to me as my brain cells returned after finding out who White No Face was, finally. And then somebody pointed out in the comments of the last video that my response to finding out who, no, who White No Face was, was laughing and crying. And I didn't know what to say to that. I, don't, I think I just hearted the comment. I don't think I even replied, or maybe I did with some kind of, emo I don't know, because I still don't know what to think about that. I think the irony's too thick. I can't, I can't cut through it. I really, I really can't. I had other thoughts about the reveal as well, but they have been lost in the mass jumble of, oh my God. And also I had a very big and busy weekend. So it's felt like, it feels like I, I read this reveal about two months ago instead of just last week. <clears throat> but I'm sure I will remember things as we read. So, let us read. We were at we were at chapter 111, correct? I know it looks like my bookmark is all responsible and in its place, but it actually wasn't. So I had to flip through and kind of half remember where we were. So somebody please verify for me. We were indeed on chapter 111, right? Or was it like 112? 
because I could very, very easily be misremembering things. 112? Yeah, okay. Oh, and I did forget to show the art last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I forgot to show the art that happens at the end of 111. So real quick. Here it is. Or maybe I did. You know, if I didn't, here it is again. In all of its, in all of its glory. Shelian looks about the way I felt at that moment. I did show it. Oh, there you go. Very briefly. Well, good. You get a second look at it. Ooh, okay. Chapter 112, then. Chaos in the upper court. Nefarious wave shakes the heavens. To put it mildly, I feel. Let me see if the tea is. Ooh, just drinkable. Yay. Thank God. My throat thanks you. <coughs> okay. Let's begin. Let's. I still don't know really what to fucking say. So then let's just begin. The... It's fine. It's fine. We will cross those bridges when we get there. It's okay. It had been centuries since Shilian last felt such chills down his spine. Mei Nanqing had declared that White No Face was standing before him. He'd assumed his master was referring to him, but he failed to realize, although Shilian was indeed standing in front of Mei Nanqing, Jun Wu was standing behind Shilian. The only thing was, he had never suspected Jun Wu in the slightest. The revelation startled him so badly that his hair stood on end. Shilian struggled a bit, but couldn't loosen Junwu's powerful grip on him in the slightest. We are willfully ignoring that metaphor. He said, in spite of himself, you... your face. Junwu seemed to pay it no mind, sounding like he had just noticed a trifling mistake. Ah, uh, a moment's carelessness, and they're out again. I gotta start doing the white no face voice for Jun Wu. I just realized this. Hang on, just give me a second. Just give me a second. I need a moment. Just one moment. <clears throat> Another wave of excruciating pain coursed through Shilian's wrist, and he finally couldn't grip the sword anymore. His fingers went slack, and the long sword dropped to the ground with a clear, resounding clang. However, it was too late. Many of the nearby heavenly officials had seen the horrifying face reflected in Hong Jin, just as Xu Lian had. A blanket of dead silence covered the great hall. Almost every heavenly official was stunned, including Feng Xin, who stood the closest and had seen everything clearly. Mei Nanqing used this chance to break free of his hold and grabbed Hong Jing from the ground, raising it with both hands to stand in front of Jun Wu. Everyone look closely. Look at the face of the man standing here. Some of the martial gods finally came to their senses. Brandishing his sword, Pei Ming rushed forward and shouted, Who are you? The heavenly officials standing farther away didn't understand what was happening, and they started calling out, What's going on? Who's General Pei talking to? How could he point a sword at the emperor? Mei Nanqing glared unblinkingly at Jun Wu. He enunciated each word as he stated, He is white no-face. Mu Qing was dumbstruck. How could he be white no-face? Is white no-face impersonating the emperor? Where's the real emperor? That made Xi Lian wonder if there had been a clandestine switch at some point, but then how long had the supposed substitute been around? Why hadn't he noticed anything amiss? The Heavenly Emperor wasn't like the elusive, low-key Earthmaster. An imposter couldn't have gone unnoticed by the entire upper court. That was another thing. Hang on. Um, two things. That reminds me of one thing and brings a new idea to my head. One, I can't believe that they fucking planted the idea. They used the other greatest reveal 
in this book about halfway through to plant the precedent for there being, you know, imposters or evil up in the heavenly court. Because then when you get to this, it's been made possible. I'm just now realizing that and I'm furious. I fucking hate her. But also that reminds me of the other thing um, that I still have to look into, obviously, because I haven't reread this yet. But the one thing that I had like a potential small issue with in terms of the big reveal of Junwoo being white no face is that um, right as they were building up to it, which is one of the best scenes I've ever read ever, um, as they were leading up to it, that's when they dropped the concept of split souls. Um, it was right then, it was right like during the reveal. And off the top of my head, which could very well be wrong, I don't think that was planted any earlier. They could have gone all the way back to volume one to plant that and I just don't remember. But that concept was kind of not foreshadowed really anywhere. So in a way, again, if I'm not mis misremembering anything, so in a way it kind of feels like they pulled that concept right at the last moment. And that feels like an extremely important piece of the puzzle that was therefore like just withheld rather than giving us all the puzzle pieces and then being like, oh, but you still didn't fit them all together. It feels like a piece of the puzzle was withheld, which usually doesn't really work in a mystery because it can make the reader feel like they've kind of like, like they never had a chance to figure it out and they kind of had one pulled over on them. Um, which again, I might be misremembering, but also in the light of the grand scheme of things of this story, it's actually a fairly minor, minor quibble that I would have. It's a very like writery thing to kind of pick out of everything else that's going on with that reveal. But that did occur to me and I did want to mention it and they did remind me of it. Hello. Where did I even... There we go. Min and Ching was just about to speak again when Jun Wu raised his hand with a sigh. You've disappointed me again. Min and Ching's face abruptly dropped, and it seemed like he had been seized in a chokehold. Lang Chen Chu picked up his greatsword and slashed out a flurry of, ga of gales, but he was sent flying backward with a single glancing look from Jun Wu. In the next moment, Pei Ming, Lang Chen Chu, Feng Shen, Mu Qing, Chuan Yi Zhen, and almost all the martial gods inside the Palace of Divine Might surged forward to surround and attack Jun Wu. An incense time later, every one of those gods lay sprawled on the ground, defeated. Jun Wu was still gripping Xi Lian's wrist. The floor of the Great Hall was littered with martial gods who had lost their spiritual powers. Only Jun Wu and Xi Lian remained standing. Mu Qing hacked up a mouthful of blood and shouted angrily at Xi Lian, who stood frozen and silent in place. Move! Do something! What are you zoning out for? Are you waiting to be killed? But he didn't know. It wasn't that Xi Lian didn't want to move. It was that he couldn't move. Not a bit. Although Jun Wu was merely gripping him with a single hand, Xi Lian thought he would notice and immediately stop him should he even slightly curl a finger. Retaliation was completely out of the question. From whichever angle he judged, the best plan was to remain still and cautious. Such was the power of the number one martial god of all three realms. The heavenly officials standing at the room's outer edges had scattered in fear. It was a moment before they remembered to escape, and, faces pale, they attempted to rush out of the palace of divine might. They only made it to the entrance before the heavy, glamorous doors closed on their own, leaving the officials to slap at them futilely. The nearly 100 heavenly officials inside the hall either couldn't get out or couldn't get up. Pure chaos reigned. An unseen force yanked Mei Nan Ching's body forward, and Jun Wu grabbed a hold of his collar, smiling as he did. Did you think I didn't have a plan if you changed your mind last minute and opened your mouth in front of everyone? Did you think they would pose a threat to me once they knew and joined forces? I could annihilate them all, 
with a single hand. I was just reminded of the other point, the one other point that I had that drove me fucking bonkers. Right. So, like, yes. Okay. So, very quickly, as quickly as possible, um, this type of villain and hero setup is classic, right? You have, like, the mirrors of each other. Um, the, uh, the, the two, uh, the hero and villain uh, both went through something similar or, like, the same kind of catalyst, but they responded to it completely differently. Um, it's a really classic setup. And I love that she made it as literal as fucking possible with having it le legitimately be a split soul situation. So they actually experienced the same thing. Whatever the fuck happened in Wu Yang, they actually experienced the same thing and then split. And White No Face was broken by it in terms of hope and faith in humanity and general outlook. He was broken by it. And Shi Lian wasn't. And now it is White No Face's entire mission of existence to break Shi Lian in the way that he was broken, which makes all of his behavior make 1000% of sense. And it's beautiful, and yet I fucking hate it, and I don't like MXTX very much, as I have stated repeatedly. But this is a brilliant take on the uh, mirrored uh, hero and villain. Um, I don't even want to say trope because it's not tropey. It's more like an archetypal setup. It's very classic. And she has, and I don't really think there's a, who else can do it now? In my opinion, like you're not going to be able to do that kind of villain setup. I don't even know how you would try to do it in a way that, that hits harder than what's happening right now. How? I don't know. You literally had them as like the same person split into it. How are you supposed to? This person, I swear. Those were all the points I wanted to make. I'm not going to stop and expound uh, um, that hard anymore. But those were the two things that I wanted to bring up. Two and a half, three. I don't know. I, there's a lot happening in this brain. Uh, ba -da -ba. Hang on. I think I wound up skipping a page. One second. Wound up turning a page in all of my... Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm back on the right place. We're towards the bottom of 112. May Nanching Suohu, unless I was wrong. Yes, I was. Never mind. We're on page 113. Why am I like this? <clears throat> I was at the very top of 114. <clears throat> We're going to... Pretend that didn't happen. It seemed that Jun Wu hadn't brought Mei Nanqing up first just to give Shi Lian a chance to say goodbye to Hua Chang. He had threatened Mei Nanqing with something, which was why the state preceptor had allowed himself to be interrogated in the hall without resistance or complaint. Who could have guessed that he would change his mind at the last second? He clutched Jun Wu's sleeves and shouted to Shi Lian, Your Highness, run away! He's gone mad! State preceptor! Shi Lian exclaimed. A moment later, Mei Nanqing couldn't speak another word. It was as if something was choking him, but he was always dressed in robes that covered his neck, so Shi Lian couldn't clearly see what was wrong. You silly fool, Jun Wu sighed. That was no different from throwing them into, the pit, into a pit of fire. This affair had nothing to do with them, but now no one will leave the heavenly capital alive. With things this dire, Shi Lian called into the spiritual communication array, Sen Lung! Can Sen Lung just pop into the heavenly realm? I mean, I guess if Jun Wu can, and if 
if you know other guy Wu, whose name I'm forgetting, Water, Black Blackwater, if Blackwater, can, then mm -hmm, maybe he can. He had never recited Hua Chung's verbal password to access his private communication array before, but he didn't have time to worry about being shy in such dangerous circumstances. And yet, even after reciting it a few times, he received no response. There was nothing but silence. On the other end, fuck! <clears throat> Just as it had been in Mount Tong Lu's domain, spiritual communication was blocked. <clears throat> With only a glance, Jun Wu could tell what he was thinking. No need to keep trying. You cannot reach him if I do not allow it. The heavenly capital was built on Jun Wu's power. This was his domain, and he reigned supreme within it. Of course he could do whatever he wanted here, which also meant the entire upper court indeed, the entire heavenly capital, had become thoroughly isolated. Truly, they were now crying for the heavens in vain, crying for the earth to no avail. That has a footnote. That's an idiom meaning that one is in a bad or hopeless situation. Suddenly, the doors to the, of the Palace of Divine Might burst open. The heavenly officials regained their spirit and were about to rejoice, but they were shocked again when they saw who was standing in the entrance. A tall, black-clad man stood outside the hall, blocking everyone's way out. His aura was chilling and unapproachable. It was Ling Wen, wearing the brocade immortal. The heavenly officials had no idea what to do as Ling Wen crossed the threshold and entered the hall, bending one knee to the ground before Jun Wu. My lord, he said with solemn respect. Rise and get to work, Jun Wu ordered. You know what to do. Ling Wen inclined his head and smiled. Of course. Mu Ching struggled to his feet, using the wall of support, both shocked and dubious upon seeing this display. Wasn't Ling Wen still at large in Mount Tonglu territory? That is correct, Jun Wu replied. However, Ling Wen is very useful, much more useful than most heavenly officials. She is a rare talent. Her actions were nothing but an insignificant mistake, so I have summoned her back. Indeed, Ling Wen's mistake in creating the Brocade Immortal was truly insignificant compared to what the white-clothed Calamity had done, and now both Ling Wen and the Brocade Immortal were Jun Wu's subordinates. A small white shadow leapt forward in a flash and latched onto Jun Wu's foot, then started nestling his boot. When he recognized it, Function cried angrily, What are you doing? Get back here! That thing was the fetus spirit. Not only did it disobey the words of its own father, but it even maliciously snaked its tongue at him. Feng Shen had just been beaten to the ground by Jun Wu, spewing blood, and now his own son was hugging the leg of the enemy, who had wounded him like it had no idea who its dad was. He was so furious that he could puke up blood again. A troop of expressionless martial gods poured into the hall soon after. They were officials Jun Wu had personally appointed, and they only obeyed his command. Ling Wen received control of them from Jun Wu and gave them their orders. Escort all of the heavenly officials to their palaces and monitor them. Pei Ming was sitting nearby, his expression complicated. Ling Wen, how heartless of you. Ling Wen patted his shoulder. You've known of my heartlessness since the day we met. How about it? Want to join us? You're always welcome. Pei Ming gave a dry chuckle, but didn't reply. Once again, Xi Lian received special treatment. Jun Wu would personally escort him back to the palace of Shen Lei. Come, Jun Wu beckoned. Xi Lian glanced back at Mei Nan Ching. Just what is going on? Who are you? What did you want to achieve? Who is this person? Is he Jun Wu or right no face? What is he planning? There were far too many questions he wanted to ask, but the answers would need to be given in great detail and in private. Only Mei Nan Ching could provide the information, but Jun Wu would hardly give him the chance. The moment they left the Palace of Divine Might, Xi Lian was shocked. Nefarious clouds rolled across the gloomy skies above the great avenue of the heavenly capital. All had changed in the blink of an eye, and the once scintillating brightness was no more. Only the Marshal Guard, under Jun Wu's direct command, still acted as they usually did, as they escorted every heavenly official back to their palaces. 
there was a choking aura of somber unease. The junior officials who had been rushing about were now sprawled unconscious on the ground. Needless to say, this had been this had to be Jun Wu's doing. From afar, the bell tolled again and again. It seemed to be the source of the problem here. They walked slowly along the great avenue of the heavenly capital toward the palace of Shanlei. On the way, Xi Lian racked his brain, trying to think of a way to escape. But he was no match for Jun Wu, and any clever tricks he could think of would be completely useless against the emperor. Besides, Jun Wu didn't just have martial might. He could always see through Xi Lian and understand exactly what he was thinking. I will not dignify that with a response. By the time they entered the palace of Shanlei, Xi Lian still hadn't come up with anything, and he told himself to let it go. It didn't matter if he couldn't think of anything. If he didn't contact Huo Chang, he'd definitely notice that something was amiss soon, as long as things didn't get out of hand before that happened. However, as soon as the door shut, Jun Wu suddenly asked, Are you thinking about Crimson Rain Sod Flower? I mean, that's usually that's a fairly safe bet. Jun Wu's words made Xi Lian's pounding heart jump to his throat, and he didn't know how to respond. If he said yes, would Jun Wu do something to Hua Chong? But Jun Wu might not believe him if he said no. At his lack of a response, Jun Wu smiled. No need to fret. I know you must. I'm sure you really want to talk to him. The way he spoke to Xi Lian was the same as it had ever been. Warm, tolerant, composed, dependable. There was no change. But the more he acted like this, the more confused and terrified Xi Lian became. If you really miss him, then why not connect with him for a bit to chat, Jun Wu continued. This so obviously feels like a trap that I almost want to say that it couldn't be. Because it feels so obviously like a trap. He had guessed what Shilian was thinking when they entered the palace. Everything was within his grasp. Junwu's smile remained unchanged. Shenlei, you know what to say to him. Do not let him worry. And I am sure that Crimson Rain Sod Flower of yours will be very happy you took the initiative to reach out to him. Oh, is this one of those things where, you know, you have a hostage or someone, you know, in trouble or whatever, and they're like, you're going to talk to this person. You're going to pretend like everything's okay so that they don't get suspicious and come try to help you. Is that what we're doing? Then he placed a hand on Xi Lian's shoulder. Xi Lian felt a subtle wave of movement, and he knew Jun Wu had cast some sort of spell that allowed him to hear every word said in their communication array. Even if Jun Wu couldn't speak directly, he could still listen in, and Xi Lian already knew what he wanted to hear him say to Hua Chong. After a pause, Xi Lian gathered his courage and boldly said Hua Chong's verbal password out loud. Jun Wu seemed to find it funny. He even chuckled a bit. However, Xi Lian had no time to be embarrassed or shy. It only took a moment for Hua Chung's voice to ring out next to Shi Lian's ears. I wonder if they're going to pull the uh, coded language trope out. Like Shi Lian is going to be able to say something. I have no idea what, but that Shi Lian would say something that tips Hua Chung without tipping off No Face. Something that would sound mundane to no face. That would bring Hua Chong running. Don't know what that could be. Hello? Okay. Guga, Guga, he sighed. It's been so long. You finally remembered Sen Lung. Shi Lian exchanged a look with Jun Wu. Sen Lung, it hasn't even been two hours since I left. To me, the point is that you left, not that you've only been gone two hours, Hua Chang said. Even for an instant, separation is separation. Jun Wu was listening in right next to him, you know. Even taking his perilous circumstances into account, Xi Lian still managed to feel some genuine embarrassment. Unfortunately, he will have to wait longer than two hours, Jun Wu said. Continue. 
Tell him that he will not be able to see you until the vengeful spirits have been taken care of. Do not attempt to give any roundabout hints. I can hear everything. Yeah, if he's going to slip something in, some coded language in or something, he's going to have to be real fucking slick about it. Mm. It would take seven days and seven nights to dispose of the vengeful spirits. After a pause, Shilian said, If you can't even wait for two hours, what will you do if I need to be away for longer? Did Jun Wu stuff a big bunch of missions into your arms? Hua Chong asked. Yeah, Shilian said. Shilian replied, Let me help, Hua Chong said. And every Star Trek fan in the chat just keeled over. Tell him that I will permit you to take a three-year break after you complete your missions, Jun Wu directed. There's no need, Shilian said. Senlong, you've already been a great help guarding the array for me. Just let me handle everything else. The Emperor already said that I can have a three-year break after I complete the missions. I won't have to do anything else. Only three years? Hua Chong asked. Is three years not enough? Shilian said. It's already a perk. All right, fine. But, Hua Chong continued languidly, Gaga. That's your perk. What about mine? <laughs> what perk? Shi Lian asked. What do you think? Hua Chong asked back. When Hua Chong asked that question, Shi Lian could practically see his quirked brow and curved lips. What could he possibly say to that? I got a couple of ideas. I think Hua Chong has a few more, though. Speaking of which, Gaga still owes me quite a bit of spiritual power. Am I wrong? No, Shilian replied cautiously. Then has Giga. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm too. <gasps> Woo! Then has Gaga thought of how he'll repay me? Hua Chong asked. Now, of all times, is when you're going in for phone sex, Hua Chong? He may or may not be aware of what is happening, and I actually don't know which version I like better. If he doesn't know anything is going on, and he just so happens, like, that's amazing. If he does, and he's just doing it anyway, that is so... Hua Chung, that I could leap out my window. So really, this is a win-win situation. Not really, Shi Lian said. Hua Chung huffed a laugh. Since you haven't thought of anything, then why don't you let me decide? Once everything is over and done with and you're on vacation, Guga can take his time to pay me back. How's that sound? That sounds like a Chekhov's gun. That better fucking go off by the end of this series. Shi Lian was forced to defend against his attacks while sneaking glimpses at Jun Wu like a guilty thief. He answered with random affirming noises. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Having slightly guided him to this point step by step and receiving the answer he wanted to hear, Hua Chung was finally satisfied and temporarily let him off the hook. So, what can I do for you? It's so rare for Guga to seek me out through spiritual communication. Jun Wu eyed Shi Lian. The reason he had allowed him to communicate with Hua Chung was to keep the Ghost King out of this, to make him think everything was fine and get him to stay obediently in the mortal realm. Shi Lian knew what kind of answer Jun Wu wanted to hear, so he replied slowly, Actually, it's not really anything. I was just afraid that you'd be worried after I'd been gone for so long. Hmm? Hua Chung wondered. Didn't Guga say it yourself? You haven't even been gone two hours. Why would I worry? Why would you worry that I'd be worried? Shi Lian was getting dizzy from going around in circles with him. He felt a little anxious, but also a little amused. Suddenly, Hua Chung said, Oh, I get it. 
Shelian's breath hitch, hitched. What do you get? Hua Chung seemed to chuckle on the other end. A moment later, he replied leisurely, Gaga. Maybe you're the one who's missing me so keenly after being apart for such a short while. Even if Shi Lian managed to cover up their feelings with ambiguity earlier, this line was too honest and exposed, and he couldn't pretend to reply casually. Under Jun Wu's watchful gaze, Shi Lian's face grew hot. A moment later, he replied softly, Yes? Hua Chung's reply was soft as well. Me too. I really want to go up there right now and whisk you away. While Shi Lian's heart was warmed by this, it also felt like it was suspended in the air. His eyes met Jun Wu's. If Hua Chung really did come to the heavenly capital, how would things end? How would Jun Wu handle him? Shi Lian suppressed his emotions and did his best to sound natural. No, it's, it's okay. It's a mess up here in the heavens right now. If you come, they'll probably lose their heads. <clears throat> Just wait a bit longer. I understand, Guga. I won't show up and scare them, Hua Chung replied lazily. I hate that glaring light in the heavenly capital, and I still have to watch over this circle of people. I'll just wait here nicely for Gaga to come back. This feels like, now what it's feeling like is, um, Hua Chung deliberately, um, pushing Shi Lian's boundaries like in a very uh um just for the sake of cuz i think under normal circumstances i feel like shilian would have like blushed and changed the subject like a million years ago but because of the very specific stress that shilian is under he's letting huachang get away with it and he's letting huachang like keep going and i think that alone is what tips is what could tip huachang off Especially now with this promise of like, oh, I'm not going to come up there then. I wouldn't scare them. I'll just stay here where I'm all, you know, I'm, I, I have things to do. I'll just, I'll stay here like a good boy. I'll say exactly what whoever must be uh, listening to us wants to hear. Although I bet he could probably guess that it was white no face. He may have even known it was Jun Wu. I don't know. Hua Chung knows things. Shi Lian couldn't tell if he had sighed in relief or broken out in a cold sweat. Yes, be good. But, Hua Chung said, if I'm going to be good, Gaga can't come back empty handed. I need a reward. Of course, of course, Shilian replied. The two exchanged a few more casual words, ambiguous and questionable, unable to part. You hang up. No, you hang up. That's what I'm imagining. They bade each other farewell repeatedly before finally ending the communication. Shilian softly huffed a breath and Judmu commented, it seems Shanley has been living an exciting life down below. Shilian didn't know how to answer that. <laughs> Jun Wu patted Shilian's shoulder, then turned around. He was about to leave the palace of Shanley when Shilian called to him. My lord? Jun Wu paused in his step. Who exactly are you? Are you the emperor? Or something else? Shilian asked. He'd struggled to accept it when he suspected a connection between the state preceptor and White No Face. If Jun Wu and White No Face were connected, his whole world would flip upside down. After all, Jun Wu was the number one martial god of the Three Realms, someone he respected and looked up to. Jun Wu didn't answer him, just continued on his way. Now that Shi Lian was left to his own devices, he brainstormed plans for retaliation as he dragged his exhausted body to the inner chambers of the Palace of Shanlei. Although this palace had become a cage, it was a magnificent cage. There was even a bathing pool made of white jade in the inner hall. Over the last few days, Shi Lian had battled the white ghost, entered the kiln, crawled, tumbled, rolled, and fought. He 
He was exhausted in both body and mind. He decided that he might as well take a bath to refresh himself. He wouldn't be going anywhere for a while anyway. He stripped down and lowered himself into the warm water to soak. Shelian leaned against the edge of the white jade pool, folding his clothes absent-mindedly. Two tiny things came tumbling out of his pile of robes, clacking crisply as they did. Shelian looked closely and saw that they were two cute, exquisite little dice. He picked up the dice and held them in his palm, remembering the words Hua Chung had said to him, If you want to see me, it won't matter what you roll. I will appear. Oh shit, that's right! What? It was unusual that he was the one who initiated their spiritual communication, and perhaps Hua Chung had noticed. But even if he realized something was wrong, he wouldn't be able to get here. The heavenly capital was now isolated from the world and completely under Jun Wu's control. Xilian was fully aware of the reality of the situation. He knew he wouldn't get to see Hua Chung, even if he rolled two sixes, but he still tried. The dice tumbled over the jade tiles on the edge of the bathing pool. Snake eyes. His luck was terrible, as always, and sure enough, there was not a single hint of movement. Xilian sighed and turned around. He was just about to dunk his face and body into the water when he heard a voice. Gaga. Water splashed everywhere as Xilian abruptly stood up in the bath. Sen Lung? Had he actually summoned Hua Chung? However, when he scanned his surroundings, he didn't see anyone's shadow. Still, that voice was definitely not a hopeful hallucination. Xilian's heart thumped when he heard another voice call out, Your Highness! Only then did Xilian realize that the voice had come from his own mouth. It was his voice, but the sound had been obscured by the spacious bathing room's humid air and the noise of splashing water. Xilian was stunned for a moment, but then it dawned on him. The soul-shifting spell. Lord Windmaster? He cried in surprise and delight. From his lips came another person's overly excited words. Yes, it's me! It's amazing, right? The Windmaster! No, I have spiritual powers again! Your Honor, I love him. I so love him. Also, helpful to note that they did establish that you could put, you know, two souls in one vessel. Which at least brings up the concepts of shifting souls around. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? This is going back to the uh, split soul, bringing it up at the last second thing. That's interesting. That creates a little bit more of a precedent. It's still a couple of big, you know, leaps to... I don't think you would still make a natural assumption that, oh, well, if this is possible, then that might be possible. Although maybe a little bit. It does help, I must say. It does help. I did forget about this. That does help. It was previously mentioned that the soul-shifting spell didn't see frequent use due to its exhaustive demands on spiritual power. Because it was much rarer and sketchier than typical spiritual communication spells, a random barrier was unlikely to deliberately block it. When Shi Ching Xuan lost his spiritual powers, the door that connected him to Shi Lian had been blocked from one side. Shi Lian hadn't imagined that door would see use now. Ching Xuan, the soul-shifting spell burns a lot of spiritual power. Where did you get it? Shi Lian asked, though he quickly realized the answer. Where else could he have gotten it? Sure enough, Shi Ching Xuan replied, It's a long story. Uh, well, it's actually not that long. That crimson rain sought flower of yours gave me a few black candies to eat. They're incredibly magical. I got an explosion of power after I ate them. Even though it's temporary, it'll still last for a while. Communication won't be a problem, but they taste really bad. Shi Lian couldn't help but recall the ghost scent candy that Pei Ming had eaten, but any spiritual power candy Hua Chong provided would be high-end. Who called me Gaga just now? Shi Lian asked. It was me, Shi Ching Xuan said. Shi Lian didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Why did you call me that? And here I thought, I know, Shi Ching Xuan said. You thought it was Crimson Rain Sod Flower coming for you, right? Xilian cleared his throat slightly, and Xi Ching Xuan continued, 
He was the one who told me to call you that. He said that you'd know he was here if I did, and it'd be comforting for you. Stop it. That's so oddly sweet that I don't know what to do with myself. Ah! Uh -huh. <clears throat> that was true, Shulian supposed. Although he had been surprised when he heard Gaga, it had been very reassuring. Is he next to you right now? Shulian asked. Is everything all right in the Royal Capital? The Ventral Spirits aren't giving you trouble, are they? Everything's fine here, Shu Ching Swan said. The Ventral sp Spirits are still being cleared out. It's just that... When you were having that conversation with Crimson Rainsart Flower earlier, he was happily laughing and talking with you about random stuff. Then, as soon as the communication ended, his face turned so dark, it was terrifying. Yep. 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 <clears throat> and then he called me over to see if I could shift my soul to you. Oh yeah, by the way, your highness, he wants me to pass on this message. Your highness, please get dressed. He's been nagging me about that for a while now. What's the problem? It's not like he'll catch a cold in the heavens. Shilian nearly fainted, and he grabbed a robe to wrap around himself at the speed of lightning. <laughs> Senlun can see? Yeah, Shi Ching Chuan replied. It's pretty annoying to keep repeating things, so I've just been transmitting everything I see and hear right to him. That way he knows everything you do or say. He just can't talk to you or control your body directly, that's all. Ah! <laughs> This is so good. This is so good. This is so good. This, this is how uh, you deliver excellent plot while also, uh, like, the, it's so wanted and it's so amazing and, like, delightful and fantastic that you almost want to call it fan service. But it's so interwoven with, like, such a legitimately fucking fantastic story and moments and situations that it's like, you're, you, you can have your cake and eat it too with MXTX, which drives me fucking bonkers because that's my ultimate goal in writing life. This is exactly what I want to be able to do. Damn, this woman. Damn her so hard, I lost my place again. There we are. Dear Lord Windmaster, how clueless can you be? Had Shilian known, he wouldn't have gotten into the bath. He'd assumed that he would have to think a while longer before an opportunity presented itself. It's fine, your highness, Shi Ching Xuan said. I didn't think you'd care so much about something like this. We're all men here. Surely you've seen Hua Chung Ju like that before. Besides, I didn't see much. He really was too clueless. Shi Lian slapped a hand to his forehead and quickly got dressed, then abruptly changed the subject as he grabbed the dice and left the inner hall. Sen Long, how did you figure out that something was wrong? After a pause, Shi Ching Xuan replied, Crimson Rainsot Flower says he knew the moment you sought him out. Oh, uh, Hua Chengju wants me to tell you this. Gaga is so shy. I knew he wouldn't recite my verbal password if it wasn't something major. Dear God! So it went even farther back than I thought it would. <sighs> what a fabulous bastard. Just as he thought. Shi Ching Xuan seemed to be talking to Hua Chang. Okay, okay. I won't waste any more time on nonsense. We'll talk business. Then he said, Your Highness, what exactly is the situation over there? Is the Emperor not around? Shilian didn't know where to start. It's precisely because he's around that things are like this. By the time Shilian had explained the key points, Shi Ching Xuan was already shaken. My God, my God, my God. Your Highness, you're not delirious, are you? It's the Emperor? We're talking about the Emperor here. I can't be sure if it really is him anymore, Shilian said. Sen Long, what do you make of all this? A moment later, Shi Ching Xuan replied, Crimson Rain, Crimson Rain Salt Flower doesn't seem very shocked. Uh-huh. He just said, not surprised at all. I already couldn't stand him. For lack of anything to say to that, Shi Lian laughed. Can you stand anyone? Well, you mean besides the obvious? That question was directed to Hua Chung, and Shi Ching Xuan replied, he says, oh, and Shi Ching Xuan replied, he says, other than you, no. 
hey, Hua Chung Ju, that's not very nice. I'm standing right here, you know? So you can't stand me either? What's wrong with me? I love him so much. All right, all right, it was just a joke. In any case, the martial gods have all been beaten into submission, and every heavenly official is confined to their palace. The heavenly capital is isolated from the world right now, so there's no way to get in. Crimson Rain Sock Flower says there is a way in, but we'll need to enlist someone's help, Xu Ching Xuan stated. Who? Xi Lian asked, but a moment later he shouted, Who's there? The latter question wasn't directed at Hua Chung or Xi Ching Xuan. It was voiced at an unusual movement behind him. Someone had come. That was the end of the chapter. We are now on page 129 for chapter 113, which is called Forks in the Road. Spirits alarm the underground of the heavenly capital. Ooh, the underground of the heavenly capital? Oh, nice. Huh. How, how is MXTX going to give me such like a devastating reveal and such a super tense situation and then find some oddly organic way to let off steam for a few pages with all of this Hua Chung nonsense. Like, why doesn't that feel forced? She's weird. She she should she should be studied. She's not she's not normal. Royer had already unwrapped itself from his wrist and was waiting at the ready, but it calmed and retreated after Xi Lian saw who had come. You, Ying Yu? Xi Lian said. A giant hole had appeared in the room, big enough for two people. Poking halfway out of the hole was Ying Yu with a sharp shovel in his hands. He huffed a breath and wiped the sweat from his brow. Your Highness, it's me. Thank goodness I didn't dig in the wrong spot. Let's get out of here. He had forgotten there was a holy spiritual device in Yin Yu's possession, the Earth Master Shovel. It was a blessing from the heavens that the device hadn't been confiscated. Apparently not having much presence could be a good thing sometimes. Enemies wouldn't target him in the chaos of battle, though of course his fellow soldiers might injure him by accident. Just as Xi Lian was about to go over and help pull Yin Yu out of the hole, his feet involuntarily took a step back. Yin Yu was puzzled. Your Highness, what is it? Xi Lian was confused as well. Why would he back away? But soon he realized that he wasn't the one backing away. It was Xi Ching Xuan, who was still a guest in his body. The Earth Master's shovel was very familiar, and it was hard not to think of the ones who had used it in the past. An inexplicable wave of terror filled Xi Lian. That was probably Xi Ching Xuan's subconscious reaction. Fortunately, the reaction wasn't too extreme, and he quickly managed to return the body's control to Xi Lian. Completely forgetting to ask Hua Chong about whose help they would have to enlist to ascend to the heavens, Xi Lian rushed to jump into the hole with Ying Yu and dropped into the heavenly capital's underground. The hole above them was quickly closed. As they crawled down the dark tunnel for a short stretch, a thought struck Xi Lian. Ying Yu, can the Earth Master Shovel dig through the barrier sealing off the heavenly capital? I don't think so, Ying Yu replied. Huh? Although that shovel is a spiritual device, you'll be stuck in the heavenly capital no matter how much you dig, Xi Ching Xuan explained. Doesn't that mean it's useless? Yin Yu scratched his head. It's not entirely useless. Barrier arrays have been set up outside every martial heavenly official's palace to stop their injuries from healing quickly. That probably won't recover their fighting power for years if they remain confined. So I thought, why not use the Earth Master Shovel to dig out a secret room in the underground somewhere, then move all the martial gods there? We can try to break out after everyone's mostly recovered. Wait, Xi Ching Xuan called out. Hua Chengju says that you should tell those, use those martial gods to just hide and heal. You'll be seeking your own deaths if you try to break out from un try to break out under Jun Wu's watch. Yin Yu was shocked. Your Highness, you can communicate with Chengju? I thought that was impossible. No, 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 Xi Lian said. The one talking to you just now wasn't me. It's me. It's me, your highness. Yin Yu, Xi Ching Xuan said. But no matter how they spoke, the words were coming from one mouth, and Yin Yu was confused. It's not you, but it's you. Doesn't that make it you, your highness? Yeah, it's me. Me, the windmaster. Wait. Now you should now you should call me the former windmaster. I'm using the soul shifting spell, Xi Ching Xuan sighed. Relaying messages is such a pain. 
Shi Ching Xuan kept entering the body to listen and watch, then returning to his own body to relay everything to Hua Chang, going back and forth over and over. Just thinking about it was tiresome. Oh, oh, that sounds like such hard work. So that's what was happening, Yin Yu quickly replied before he returned to digging with renewed vigor. The two crept forward for a while before Yin Yu spoke again. Here should be good. Your Highness, please remain hidden for now. I'll go pick up the next heavenly official. The tunnel they had entered by at the beginning was gradually closing, and Shi Lian said, Huh? By yourself? I'll go with you. No, it's all right, Yin Yu said. Truth be told, Your Highness, the larger the hole, the more power the Earth Master Shol uses. It'll probably be faster if I go alone. The closest martial god palace to here is... He thought for a moment before continuing. In any case, I'll be right back. Shi Ching Xuan had used the soul-shifting spell so many times, and the exhaustion from the immense drain of spiritual power was affecting Shi Lian. He sat on the ground, nodding tiredly, his head and body heavy. He propped up his head with one hand. All right. Ying Yu opened a new hole and dug onward while Shi Lian lay on the ground and closed his eyes. Sometime later, he jolted awake. Ying Yu? It was pitch black all around him and deathly silent. Ying Yu still hadn't returned. Your Highness, you're awake? You must be tired. Ying Yu hasn't gotten back yet, Shi Ching Xuan verified. The short rest had replenished Shi Lian's energy. How long has he been gone? Why hasn't he returned? It's been almost two incense time, Shi Ching Xuan said. He couldn't have gotten lost, could he? Shi Lian sensed that something was wrong. I'll go look for him. He rolled over and crawled toward the tunnel through which Ying Yu had left. Since Ying Yu still needed to use this tunnel to return, it hadn't automatically filled itself in after the Earth Master Shovel burrowed through. As Shi Lian made his careful way forward, Shi Ching Xuan spoke. Crimson Rain Flower says, Guga, you shouldn't go. Shi Lian stopped moving. Something's probably not right, I suspect. Yeah, Shi Ching Xuan replied. Hua Chung Ju's tone sounded pretty serious. But it's precisely because it doesn't seem right that I have to go find him, Shi Lian said. If Yin Yu ran into trouble... A chill ran down his spine. Startled, Shi Lian whipped his head around. Shi Ching Chuan also sensed the chill and exclaimed, My God, what was that? That sudden shudder. There was only one, there was only the empty pitch black tunnel behind him and nothing more. However, Shi Lian stared at it for a long while before he replied, It's nothing. Shi Ching Chuan instantly shut his mouth and held his breath because right after Shi Lian said the words, It's nothing out loud, he then soundlessly mouthed, don't make a sound. Something's here. Someone else was in the tunnel. They had been right behind Shi Lian, but disappeared the moment he looked back. Shi Lian's gut instinct for danger was never wrong. He couldn't allow the one behind him to know he had already noticed them, so he pretended he'd sensed nothing amiss. Shi Ching Xuan hated situations like these more than anything, and goosebumps rose across his arms. Is it his highness Yin Yu? Shi Ching Xuan mouthed back. Yin Yu wouldn't need to sneak around. After a moment's silence, Shi Lian asked soundlessly, Has Sun Lung said anything? Uh, uh, uh that Sun Lung, that, <laughs> that Sun Lung of yours looks really scary right now, Shi Ching Xuan replied. He says, Gaga, if the situation calls for it, use the soul shifting spell to move into the Wind Master's body. Never mind that he didn't have enough spiritual power right now to use the soul-shifting spell, even if he had plenty. Shi Lian couldn't possibly just up and leave all by himself, abandoning the mess in the heavenly capital. Don't worry, Sen Lung, Shi Lian replied. He hadn't even specified what not to worry about when his head shot up. Something was coming from ahead. The first sense of danger had come from behind, but now it was in front of him. It was still pitch black when he looked. He couldn't see anything. Your Highness, what did you notice now? Shi Ching Xuan mouthed. What should we do? Does this mean we should go forward or back? For a moment, he strained his senses. Then Shi Lian replied, It means forward or back makes no difference, so who cares? That's one way to look at it. He crawled forward. He crawled and crawled until he suddenly stopped in surprise. How can this be? Shi Ching Xuan said despite himself. A fork in the road stood before them. There were two tunnels. Um, could Yin Yu have dug a path and discovered he was going in going the wrong way, so he dug another one? Shi Ching Xuan wondered. Yin Yu must be very familiar with the Heavenly Capital's layout. How could he make a mistake like that? Shi Lian thought. This is probably something worse. He didn't say this out loud, though. He only said, Ching Xuan, can you help me ask Sen Lung to pick a path, left or right? A moment later, Shi Ching Xuan said, Crimson Rainsaw Flower says he doesn't recommend either one. 
don't pick either. Shelian didn't know whether to laugh or cry. While he figured there was probably something bad waiting for him at the end of both paths, he couldn't just say where he was. After some contemplation, he said, Ching Xuan, you pick one. Huh? Me? Shi Ching Xuan asked. Yeah, if you pick, there's still a 50% chance you'll pick the better route. If I pick, then... All right, I get it. He struggled with this internal dilemma for a moment, then turned his head to the left. Shi Lian nodded and crawled over. The deeper they crawled, the narrower the tunnel became. It was almost suffocating, but still passable. They turned and wound and crawled for a long while before the burrow opened into a much larger space. Thankfully, although they remained on high alert the entire way, they hadn't run into any real danger. Shilian examined their surroundings for a moment. What is this place? I don't know. I can't see clearly, Shi Chuan said, uncertain. But why does it feel a little familiar? Huh? He wasn't the only one who noticed. Shi Lian had as well. It was very familiar. Wasn't this the secret room where Shi Lian had slept awaiting Ying Yu's return? He was certain. There was another tunnel in the chamber. It was the one Ying Yu had dug with the Earthmaster shovel when he left. The same one Shi Lian had used to go find him. Shi Ching Xuan shuddered. How did we end up back here? Was the... Was this path here before? Of course not. There was only one tunnel leading out when they left. The path they used to return had appeared from nowhere. When they ran into that fork in the road, the left path detoured in a big circle and brought them back to the start. Yin Yu couldn't have dug this. He wouldn't have wasted so much effort to secretly do something this pointless. He had probably encountered this bizarre detour as well. Shilian knew he should have gone with him. Without another word, he crawled into the tunnel he had initially used to leave and quickly came to the fork in the road once more. This time, he chose the path on the right. As he crawled, Chi Ching Xuan spoke. I think it looks like my luck wasn't that great this time. I picked the wrong path. I should have chosen the right fork from the beginning. No, I think your luck is still really good, Chi Lian said. What do you mean? Chi Ching Xuan asked. Chi Lian tried to word this delicately. Um, how do I put this? The path on the right might be even scarier than the one on the left. Then they heard it. From behind came the scratching sounds of something rapidly closing in on their position. Shilian unwrapped Roye and threw it behind him. Roye, help block it for a moment. He started madly crawling forward, almost three meters per push. Shi Ching Xuan was losing his mind in panic. Yeah, how exciting! Exciting! Exciting, exciting, exciting. The most exciting part hasn't come yet, Shi Lian called out. Come, take a look. What's that now? Shi Ching Xuan exclaimed. Shi Lian stopped his frantic crawling and gave a long exhale. Before them was another fork in the road. Right, Shi Ching Xuan cried without thinking. Shi Lian turned right, turned right resolutely and kept crawling, but endless forks in the road presented themselves. Left, right, left, right, Shi Ching Xuan cried. He no longer even knew what he was yelling. Under such dire circumstances, with the situation changing at a moment's notice, he couldn't leave Shi Lian's body to ask for Hua Chung's advice for to ask Hua Chung for for advice. The situation might change completely on the return on the next turn. The thing behind them that had been blocked by Roye for a little while, but it was still closing in on them. The tunnels were also growing narrower and narrower, tighter and tighter. Finally, they reached the point where they couldn't move their arms at all. I can't crawl any further, Shi Lian exclaimed, his shoulders already stuck. Then what should we do, Shi Ching Kuang cried. Do we have to backtrack? The thing pursuing them was going to catch up any second. No fear, Shi Lian exclaimed. A man can both charge and withdraw. When moving forward is impossible, we'll take a step back. If that's our only option, then so be it. Come on. He took two steps backward, feeling a hand, freeing a hand in the process. He was just about to grab for Feng Shin and fight the thing behind him to his heart's content when a sudden chill ran through his body. Shi Lian's heart sank to the pit of his stomach. When he looked up, someone chuckled in the darkness. Though he couldn't see who it was, a hand reached out and settled on Shi Lian's head. His eyes went wide and the next moment he lost consciousness. Some time later, Shi Lian slowly came to. 
What do you mean? Excuse me? They just... <sighs> uh, where did even... Upon, upon regaining consciousness. Jesus Christ. Oh, let me adjust here. Whew. Where... We are about... Oh, we are about halfway through. Okay, here. Hang on. Let me see. Is there... Okay, good. We'll go a couple of pages, and then I'll take a break real quick so I can um, refresh my tea. Uh, where the hell... There we go. Upon regaining consciousness, Shilian found himself sitting on a chair. His entire body was firmly and securely bound. As he struggled a bit, he discovered it was Roye that was binding him. Shilian was perplexed. Roye, what are you doing? Roye was clearly distressed, and it drooped, nuzzling him. Shilian looked closer and discovered that Roye had been tied into a series of complicated snarls. No wonder it couldn't fight back. Being tied into knots like this was its greatest fear. Before it had grown wiser, it used to like to mindlessly wind around and play, and it invariably tangled itself into a mess of complicated knots as it did. Every time, Shilian would exasperatedly work the knots loose. It became smarter in time and learned to behave itself, and never knotted itself up again. The personal growth of a long uh, strip of cloth is now meaningful to me. This is Yan Li's soup all the fuck over again. Feeling helpless, Shi Lian tried to see if he could break the chair apart instead, but unfortunately, it wouldn't move at all. It seemed to be affixed to the floor by extremely strong spiritual power. Since he couldn't move, he decided to simply observe his surroundings. Shi Lian scanned the room. He was likely inside a palace, and a rather new and glamorous one at that, but he didn't know which one. In any case, it wasn't the Palace of Divine Might. His thoughts were interrupted by a hand suddenly settling onto his shoulder. A gentle voice came from over his head. Shenlei, my dear Shenlei, you really are too naughty. Chills spiked up Xilian's spine at the sound of that voice. A man with one hand resting behind his back stepped forward from where he stood behind the chair. June fucking Wu. His other hand remained on Shilian's shoulder, and as he walked into view, he continued to speak. In the six months since your return, the heavenly capital has been smashed and broken, wrecked all over. You are quite naughty indeed, wouldn't you say? What were you doing, sneaking and scurrying about underground? Are you a little mass? Was it fun? He spoke with a kind, gentle voice, like a father watching his beloved child mess around. Shilian found it intensely creepy and unnerving, and he had no idea how to respond. He felt a sudden gust of cold at his feet, and when he looked down, he saw a bundle of something white hugging his boots and watching him with a fiercely malicious stare. The fetus spirit! Great. And the mom. Shilian lifted his gaze. He had pretty much figured out what had happened. Ying Yu was captured by Jun Wu while digging around with the Earth Master shovel. Jun Wu had sent some things to stop Shilian underground, which was why he had gone through that terrifying experience. After a moment struck speechless, Shilian finally knew what to say. You have such awful hobbies. That chase in the tunnels reminded him of the days he spent consumed by panic and anxiety due to White No-Face's suffocating pursuit. If Jun Wu had wanted to capture him, he should have just done it. Why terrorize him like that? However, Jun Wu seemed quite cheerful, and he smiled. But Shan Lei is now much braver than before. Shi Lian couldn't continue that line of conversation. Instead, he asked, Where's in you? Jun Wu placed his hands on the back of the chair and turned Shi Lian around. There is no rush. You will see. And there's not just him. 
He was now facing a mirror. However, he didn't see his own reflection. Rather, it showed a pale-faced Yin Yu. By Yin Yu's feet lay an unconscious person, head soaked with blood and face black and blue. From the curly hair, Shi Lian could tell it was, it was Tuan Yu Jen. Shi Lian asked in alarm, What are you up to? <sighs> that was the end of the chapter. Which means we are on page 141, chapter 114, which is called Unable to be Perfect, A Heart Filled with Regrets. So we're really in for just a joyful, sunshiny time for the second half of this. So real quick, like I have an electric kettle, so thank God it doesn't take very long to boil water. Um, I'm going to go boil some more tea real quick. And so I can have a constant stream of, of, um, I almost said alcohol, adrenaline, no caffeine. There we go. So I can have a constant thing of caffeine. It'll only take a few minutes. Where the heck did my, there it is. I'm literally just getting up, grabbing tea, and sitting back down. So it will only take a few minutes. I will be right back, and we will get into the second half of today's stream. Alrighty, I will be right back.
And we're back. I am now armed with hot tea once again. And we are going to dive right in to chapter 114. Did I say the chapter title last time? Because I'm reading it now and it's hitting me new. It's called Unable to be Perfect, A Heart Filled with Regrets. I'm concerned. The bitch better, she better not make me cry. Uh-uh. No, no, no. We're not doing that today. Today is for, you know, cute bullshit kind of oddly perfectly mixed in with earth-shattering revelations. We are not, mm, mm don't, 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 don't you do it. Don't you do it, MXDX. Do not. Whew. The mirror reflected what was transpiring on the other side of the wall. Yin Yu shook Tuan Yu Jen vigorously. Wake up, wake up! Tuan Yu Jen finally came to and mumbled blearily, Shi Hong, who be me under now? What's he? Poor Chi Ying. He was so bruised up that he was slurring his speech. Shi Lian couldn't help but feel sympathetic. Do you think I could have beaten you up? Yin Yu asked. Tuan Yu Jen scratched his head, and only then did he seem to recall what had happened. Oh, it was the emperor who... Mimia. He suddenly remembered something else, and his energy seemed to return. He snatched away your shovel! Oh, do you want me to help snatch it back? Do you really think you could beat him? Yin Yu asked. Shi Lian finally figured it out. He was in the palace of Chi Ying. It seemed Yin Yu had been captured by Jun Wu when he came to look for Tuan Yu Jen. Jun Wu had circled back behind him, and Shi Lian used the chance to lower his head and mouth soundlessly. Lord Moon Master, are you still there? However, it wasn't Chi Ching Chuan who responded. Of course not, Jun Wu said. It suddenly occurred to me that there were some loopholes in the Heavenly Capital's barrier, Jun Wu explained. I have only just barred the soul shifting spell. Well, that was nice while it lasted. Jun Wu patted his shoulder and said amicably, And to think I was the one who taught you the soul shifting spell all those years ago. I am very pleased that Qian Lei has been making practical use of the things I taught him. With that, Jun Wu left. Not long after, he appeared in the image in the mirror. Chuan Yu Jin was the first to notice his arrival. Yin Yu whirled around and called out in alarm, My lord! Chuan Yu Jin jumped to his feet, ready to fight, but Jun Wu easily smacked him back onto the bed with a casual wave. The entire bed collapsed on impact, and Chuan Yu Jin fell to the ground, head lolling. He had lost consciousness again. Yin Yu was fully on guard, but Jun Wu said to him, No need to be so tense. Think of it this way. Any attempt at defense would be a pointless effort. So why not relax? That was certainly true. Not knowing how to respond, Ying Yu gave the same awkward smile that he always had, though he quickly retracted the expression. Jun Wu, on the other hand, appeared relaxed and at ease. My dear Ying Yu, I do not think I have ever chatted with you like this before. Isn't that right? I guess not, Ying Yu replied cautiously. Even back when he was the martial god who ruled the West, his base of believers wasn't strong, his merits were few, and his rank wasn't impressive. He wasn't the lowest ranked of the heavenly officials in the upper court, but he was still below average, so he'd almost no opportunities to interact with the heavenly emperor. The highest of the high. In the past, he probably would have been nervous if Jun Wu even passed by his palace's entrance. Now, his anxiety had reached new heights. But there aren't many heavenly officials who have spoken to me before, or know me, Yin Yu added. That's not necessarily true, Jun Wu said. There are many who know you, even if they've never met you before. Really? Yin Yu asked, surprised. Many know of your Shidi. And when your Shidi is mentioned, you are often an accompanying, an accompanying subject, as his foil, Jun Wu replied. Those were extremely hurtful words. 
Jun Wu gave a colorless description devoid of emotion, but that just made it sting more. It was the objective truth. Tuan Yujen was still dizzy, not yet back to his senses. Ying Yu hung his head low and clenched his fists. Shi Lian could vaguely guess what Jun Wu was planning now. It took a long time for Ying Yu to gather his courage. My lord, what do you want? You're already the Heavenly Emperor, the number one martial god of the Three Realms. From heaven above to hell below, there is no one who could stand equal to you. So, why are you doing this? What exactly do you want? Of course, Jun Wu didn't answer him. Ying Yu, do you want to return to the upper court? He asked abruptly. What? Shi Lian was also surprised by this question. What was Jun Wu planning? Why would he try to coax Ying Yu to change sides at a time like this? Surely you do not actually like being a mere pawn in the ghost realm. Ying Yu finally snapped out of his shock. My lord thinks too much. There's nothing to like or dislike about it. Oh no, Shi Lian cried in his mind. You can't answer like that. Now he'll find your weak point. Sure enough, Jun Wu smiled. Did you know? An answer like that always means I dislike it and would rather not talk about it. It was true. If Yin Yu truly felt confident and actually liked his current position in the ghost realm, he would have easily responded, I like it very much. By avoiding giving an answer, his real feelings were made clear. You came from a renowned school, an orthodox sect that never traversed the deviant path. Growing up in that sect, you were always told that ascending was the ultimate thing to strive for. Jun Wu continued. It is very difficult to give up that sort of goal. Falling in with the ghost realm was an unfortunate circumstance, an act born of helplessness. Of course you cannot say you are satisfied with your position in the ghost realm. It was never what you wanted in the first place. Yin Yu didn't have enough confidence to deny it. He said weakly, Cheng Ju has shown me grace. He saved me. I know, Jun Wu said. He even helped you pacify and send off Jen Yu's vengeful spirit after he died during your banishment. Am I correct? Yes, Yin Yu confirmed. So whether or not I'm satisf satisfied with my current position, it's all... That is dissatisfaction, Jun Wu noted. You are bound by his grace and have nowhere else to go. You are in denial. Yin Yu hung his head and didn't reply. Shi Lian broke out in a cold sweat. He could guess how Jun Wu planned to attack, and Yin Yu was full of weakness from head to toe, in every expression, every gesture. Then let me ask you another question, Jun Wu said. Have you shown Tuan Yu Jen grace? Why must you place yourself in an unsatisfactory position because someone showed you grace? Why must you devote yourself to repaying his kindness? When you showed Tuan Yu Jen grace, he made you fall this low, Jun Wu continued. Yin Yu... Compromising yourself for another success is a bad habit. You must know that no one will thank you. With every step, he cornered Yin Yu further and trampled the places he hurt most. You yearned for ascension your entire life. You wanted a good position in the upper court and to join the ranks inside the Palace of Divine Might, Jun Wu went on, even after Chuan Yi Jen made you an embarrassment, turned you into his background accessory, and made you the laughing stock of the heavens. You endured it and struggled to keep your place in the heavenly capital. In the heavenly capital, was that not because you wanted to stay? You belong here. But Chuan Yu Jen made a mess of everything. He effortlessly stole all the things that should have been yours. Who does he think he is? Have you not sacrificed as much as him? No, you sacrificed far more than he ever has. And when it comes to overall ability, he might not even compare. Why is Qi Ying now alone in the upper court, with neither aid nor support? It is because his mind is simple. He is ignorant and foolish, blunt and savage, and incapable of earning anyone's respect. But you, you are far more mature. You know the ways of the world better than him. You know when to charge and when to withdraw, and you are always willing to put in the effort. Your achievements would be many, many times greater than his if you found his natural ta if you had his natural talent and spiritual power. All would respect you. 
Yin Yu was growing restless. I don't understand why my lord is saying all this. What ifs are meaningless. His spiritual powers are his own. Suddenly he cried out and raised his hand, then asked in alarm, What? What is this? Dazzling spiritual light had burst from one of his hands, bright enough to blind any who looked at it directly. Jun Wu was unmoved. No need to be afraid. It's just a bit of spiritual power. Only then did Yin Yu calm down a little. He said in disbelief, Whose spiritual power is this? Mine? I'm not this. His spiritual power wasn't that strong. It is not yours yet, Jun Wu said. Whether it will become yours will depend on what you choose. Oh shit, here we go. If it's not mine, whose is it? Yin Yu exclaimed. Could it be? Someone immediately came to mind, and he looked at Tuan Yi Jen. As stubborn and resilient as always, Tuan Yi Jen regained consciousness in that moment, th though, bleh, though bewilderment was still plastered on his face. He was clearly confused again. Correct. This is Tuan Yi Jen's spiritual power, Jun Wu, Jun Wu replied. Tuan Yi Jen gaped. Huh? Why are his spiritual powers inside me? Yin Yu questioned. How can spiritual power be transferred like this? How is this possible? Even fates can be swapped. Why not spiritual power? Jun Wu said. That doesn't open a door. There are many things that are hardly as difficult as you assume. It is only a matter of, of a few words and a few brushstrokes from a few great heavenly officials. Yin Yu shuddered. Th this... He shook his hands as if trying to toss away a scalding hot potato. But the spiritual power was only sparked with joyful vigor on his hands, blasting wherever his fingers pointed. An entire set of walls inside the palace of Qi Ying were blown apart in an instant. The divine statue collapsed, and the roof almost caved in. This shocked Yin Yu even further, and he didn't dare randomly throw his hands around anymore. Do not be so nervous, said Jun Wu, smiling. Take your time. Just keep it under your control. Shaken and terrified, Yin Yu held one hand with the other. His arms trembled. Yin Yu, let me ask you again. Do you want to return? Jun Wu asked. Yin Yu heaved several breaths, his eyes bloodshot. He gazed at Jun Wu. If you want to return, not only can I remove your cursed shackle, I can also transfer all of Tuan Yi Jin's spiritual power to you, Jun Wu said. Wait, isn't this what... No Face, like, does? A lot of the times? Or am I making that up? He, like, spins deals? Like, makes bargains? Why do I feel like I'm making that up? Whew. Ying Yu heaved several breaths, his eyes bloodshot. He gazed at Jun Wu. If you want to return, not only can I remove your cursed shackle, blah, 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 my bad. Tuan Yi Jin just lay there, utterly stupefied. He, it seemed he had never even considered the existence of such an evil spell. Are you crazy? Shi Lian exclaimed. And from now on, there will never be another who only knows of Qi Ying, but not of Yin Yu. Jun Wu continued slowly. For who would dare not remember your name? No one ever again. It is what he does. That's what I thought. Okay. Yin Yu stumbled back a few steps, his mind a mess. I... Shilian was so tense that he'd forgotten he was still tied to the chair by Roye. He held his breath, his hands gripping the chair as his body leaned forward. There was one thing Jun Wu had gotten right, and Shilian could see it too. Deep down in Yin Yu's heart, he preferred the heavens. He had belonged to the upper court all along. This feeling was planted deep within his mind. Unchangeable. And did Yin Yu really not harbor a single resentful thought toward Tuan Yi Jen? He couldn't be sure. So much had happened between them, it was impossible to say, I don't hate you, so easily. 
The hatred he felt might be great or small, but Yin Yu was neither assertive nor self-possessed. His decisions were greatly influenced by those around him, making him an excellent mark for somebody like the fucking Calamity. Since they didn't know each other well, Shi Lian couldn't be sure of what Yin Yu would do. He could only pray silently, Your Highness Yin Yu, be careful. Yin Yu was frightened out of his wits, and for a long while he sat on the floor with his face in his hands. Eventually, he looked up with cold, somber eyes. He stared at Tuan Yi Jen, who had been beaten so badly he looked like nothing more than a pile of trash. And then he said in a low voice, My lord, can you really give me all of his spiritual power? Shi Lian's heart sank. Tuan Yi Jin gaped at Ying Yu with a wide open mouth. Shi Shang? Why don't I give it to you now? Then you will see for yourself what I can do, Jin Wu said. Ying Yu still seemed concerned. Then could he steal it back? It's his own spiritual power after all, so if he wanted it back, it is impossible for him to retrieve it unless you return it willingly, or unless you die, Jin Wu said. Here, would you like to paint this X on your back for the rest of your life? If his spiritual power is transferred to me, will Tuan Yi Jin die? Yin Yu asked doubtfully, or will something else happen? Despite everything, he probably still didn't want Tuan Yi Jin to die by his hand. Nothing will happen. The process will be a bit painful, that is all, Jun Wu, re Jun Wu replied. But who in this world has not suffered pain? How he is dealt with afterward, whether he lives or dies, that will be entirely up to you. What about the other heavenly officials, Yin Yu then asked. So many in the upper court saw what happened at the Palace of Divine Might. If word got out, Jun Wu smiled. So what if they know? They are mere ants who can be crushed with a single hand. Annihilate them all, bring up a new batch of heavenly officials, change your face and your name, make up a new background. Who would be the wiser? Please tell me that's not what Junbu fucking did. As he said this, his expression was nonchalant, like he was suggesting pouring a new cup of tea if the old one had gone cold. Hey. Nonchalant. And clearly speaking from experience. Finally, Yin Yu asked, In the new upper court, I, what would my position be? Ling Wen will be, left, will be my left hand, and you shall be my right, Jin Yu said. There will be none above you besides me. Yin Yu gritted his teeth. Finally, he said, Very well, and continued darkly, Pray my lord, rem pray my lord remembers the promise he made to me today. Now, he trailed off and turned his gaze on Tuan Yu Jen. As you wish, Jun Wu replied. The moment the words left his lips, Tuan Yu Jen began writhing. His face twisted and he screamed. Blood flowed from every orifice as he clutched his head and rolled across the floor in agony. As for Yin Yu, his body suddenly began glowing with spiritual light. His entire face his entire face was shining. He swung a hand upward and blew a giant hole through the ceiling of the palace of Chi Ying. Chunks of the golden palace roof tumbled to the ground with an enormous crash. Standing among the wreckage, Yin Yu bowed his head to look at the at his hands, clenching them in their fists. Jun Wu looked like he was watching a small child play with a new toy. How does it feel? It was a moment before Yin Yu replied, I've never had such strong powers before. Tuan Yi Jen was still howling on the floor. Yin Yu gazed at him with a complicated expression. From now on, it's yours. Oh, sorry. Woo! I'm so. Ah, ah, ah. This is what happens when you get into the last two volumes of an MXTX anything. Okay. 
Yin Yu gazed at him with a complicated expression. My master once said that Chuan Yijin was someone born to ascend, that his abilities were a gift from the heavens. Is this what a heavenly gift feels like? From now on, it's yours, Jun Wu said. Then Yin, Yin Yu slowly nodded. The next moment, he raised his hand and shot a blast from his palm. The blast used all of Chuan Yijin's power, its, its strength terrifying. A white light erupted from the mirror. A moment later, Yin Yu drew a huge circle in the air with his right hand, then snatched from the air and hurled it out to ensnare Jin Wu. Jin Wu frowned slightly as he looked at the circle of light around his feet, seeming wary of touching it. He watched as Paul he watched as Yin Yu pulled at Tuan Yi Jen on the ground. Yin Yu, said Jun Wu, looking indifferent. Would you like to explain why you have gone back on our deal at the last moment? Yin Yu kept his back turned to him as he hoisted Tuan Yi Jen onto it. He didn't respond. What you are doing is certainly praiseworthy. Truly, a man of class, Jun Wu said. However, is this what you actually want deep in your heart? You have endured and suffered this for hundreds of years. Are you going to continue? Yin Yu still did not respond. Do you truly not hate the one you are saving right now? Or even if you do not hate him, are you not annoyed? Yin Yu finally couldn't take it anymore. He clenched his fists tight, cracking his knuckles and whirled around. I do resent him. He is annoying. But so what? Tuan Yijin was a flustered mess, and blood spewed from his nose and mouth as he tried to speak. Shishang, shut up, Yin Yu shouted, then turned to Jun Wu again. My lord, my lord, no, not my lord, you, why must you keep reminding, why must you keep reminding me of that? Why do you speak like you actually understand me? Yes, I hate him, but so what? He's given me so much trouble. Can't I hate him for it? Shi Lian had no words. At first sunk into the bottom of the valley, his heart was suddenly thrown into the skies once more. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry, and he almost fell over. What a kind of messed up logic was that. Ooh, I think I just scraped the mic. My bad. My apologies. We had to pick a sip for, you know, laughing and crying and perfect storms. <clears throat> But, Yin Yu continued, but I only, I only wanted to hate him. That doesn't mean I want to hurt him. What was all that about how things should have been mine? Nothing belongs to anyone at birth besides their own natural talent. I don't want someone else's possessions. Bitch, go off. Yes. My God, golf clap it out for Yin Yu. Shi Lian's eyes lit up. Well said. I do want to return to the heavens. I do want to be ranked in the top 10, Yin, Yin Yu continued. But it's completely meaningless if I don't do it on my own. I'm unlucky. I accept that. If I'm not as powerful as him, at least I can admit it. Admitting that I can't compare isn't that hard. Oh, oh shit such pride in that instant Shi Lian finally saw Yin Yu shine with the glorious valor of his long ago youth Chuan Yi Jen had burst into tears on Yin Yu's back blood mingled with tears and snot and it all splattered onto Yin Yu's face Yin Yu broke down shouting stop that Chuan Yi Jen sobbed and moaned she shung I'm sorry. Yin Yu was at the end of his patience. You don't need to apologize to me anymore either. No matter how much you say you're sorry, you won't understand. I've honestly had enough of you. Jun Wu sighed and rubbed his temple. Besides, besides, I'm not completely useless either, Yin Yu added. You said it yourself. He might not compare to me when it comes to overall ability, but I've got my own. A strange noise rang out. Click. Jun Wu turned around with a casual sweep of his hand. Exhil exhilarating. You and Shen Lei must get along well. What? 
What happened? Still tied to the chair, Shi Lian's heart was pounding so hard it was going to jump out of his chest. What happened to Ying Yu? He had stopped talking and his expression had turned cold. As for Jun Wu, he rested his hands behind his back and calmly strolled out of that seemingly powerful circle of light. It had not held him for a moment. I expected you to respond that way. That is why I did not remove your cursed shackle. Cursed shackle. There was indeed a cursed shackle on Yin Yu's arm. Shi Lian quickly looked over just as Yin Yu also raised his wrist. The cursed shackle had tightened drastically. It looked like it was going to snap Yin Yu's hand off. As for Yin Yu's arm, it had turned as pale as paper and the whiteness was spreading upward. The cursed shackle was draining his blood. Fucking. Why? Ugh. Shi Lian lunged forward. The chair fell over, leaving him and it in a heap on the floor. Now he couldn't even see the mirror. He struggled like mad, but it was useless. Oh, tapped the mic again. From the mirror, he could only hear a savage beating. Ooh. A long time later, a pair of white boots came into Shi Lian's field of view. It was Jun Wu who had returned. Deep breaths. I'm just, I'm deep breathing over here. In his hand, there was a cursed shackle. It was so engorged with blood that it had turned a dark crimson color. It had to be taken from Yin Yu. Jun Wu crouched and petted Shi Lian's head. Go say goodbye to your little friend. Royer was finally untied from the knots that bound it. Shilian crawled upright and threw a punch at Jun Wu's face. Of course, it didn't land, and he almost tripped over his own feet in the attempt, but he hadn't expected it to hit Jun Wu in any way. He was just venting his anger. He dashed madly to the, pal to the palace hall. Yin Yu was lying on the ground. He looked dried up and shriveled, as white and thin as a paper doll. Even his cheeks were sallow. All the spiritual light on him was gone. It had been returned to the bruised and beaten Tuan Yi Jen, whose face was, Why do we have art of this? <sighs> One second. Now completely unrecognizable. Hang on, what's the first part of that sentence? Whose face was now completely unrecognizable. It seemed the spiritual power had returned to its rightful master. Shi Lian rushed over to them. Your Highness Yin Yu! Yin Yu blinked with sunk sunken eyes. When he saw Shi Lian, he croaked, Your Highness. Tuan Yi Jin was clinging to the floor, wailing at the top of his lungs, lungs and screaming to the heavens, I'm sorry, Shi Xiong. All I know is how to fight, but I can't beat him. The blood from his mouth and nose splattered into Yu Yin's face again. Even the sight of it looked miserable. Veins popped up on Yin Yu's forehead. I told you to stop that, he shouted with a last bit of energy. Forget it. Just drive me to my death. His vigor gone once more, Yin Yu deflated. Shi Lian couldn't tell if he wanted to sigh, shed silent tears, or smile despite himself. That's a particularly grandiose version of not knowing whether to laugh or cry. Let's do two sips for that one. And now I guess I'll show you the art. It's not emotional after all. This says, ooh, you guys can't hear it go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, 
Oh, wow. I really did knock myself off course again, didn't I? Ah. All of a sudden, tears welled up in Yinyu's dry eyes. I knew, he whispered. Yi Jen is a genius, but I'm just ordinary. I could only climb so high. I knew that. The pain of powerlessness seized Shi Lian's heart. Even though I knew I couldn't accept it, Yin Yu said. In truth, I felt the same as Jen Yu. Jen Yu? Yeah. I was even more frustrated than he was. It was not that I wasn't resentful. It was impossible to be otherwise. After that incident, I could never bring myself to reflect on why I told Yi Jen to die when I knew he was wearing the brocade immortal. Was I really just was I really just driven to madness or did I actually want him dead? Shi Lian hel held him. It's all right. It's over. Those are all small matters, really. Your Highness, Yin Yu, if you live in this world for another few hundred years, you'll know that none of that really matters. Whether you are driven to madness or really wished someone would die, who in the world has never had such thoughts? It's almost like thoughts and actions, two different things. We love to see it. I once even thought of massacring everyone who ever wronged me. It's true, and no lie, I almost did it. Hello? Oh, sorry, I skipped on my own. If <laughs> But in the end, I still think it's so unfair, Yin Yu sobbed. If I wasn't destined to be perfect, I at least wanted to be perfectly kind. But I couldn't even manage that. It's really so unfair. And to tell you the truth, I can't get over it, even now. I just can't swallow the fact that I'm dying for this little bonehead, Yi Jen. I can't even let go and die without resentment or regrets. What the heck? Your Highness, you've already worked so hard, Shi Lian comforted him softly, and you've done very well. You are already much, much better than most people. Most people, huh? Yin Yu gave a small, arduous chuckle. Then he sighed, and the sound of his last regret passed along with his soul as he mumbled. But I wanted to be a god. Shi Lian bowed his head deeply. Your Highness Yin Yu, this world has no true gods. That was the end of that chapter. <sighs> Let's see. What, what page did we even start on? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't have my my room in my house has been in an uproar all weekend because it was a big weekend. So whereas I normally have like uh, um, a notebook next to me that I can like write stuff in, like I don't know the page I started on. Um, I don't have that at the moment. So hang on, we started on one twelve. So that was one eleven. No fifty six. Yeah, we're like forty five pages now. Okay, so then let let me. Just glancing, trying to see if there's an obvious, like, a scene break in the next few pages. Uh, no, and it goes to 170. Oh, this is another, like, 20 pages. Okay. So we're only going to get a few pages into chapter 115. We are on page 157. And chapter 115 is called Breaking the Standstill a well-timed gift? What the fuck does that even mean? I mean... Breaking the standstill. A well-timed gift. I really do love the mysterious ones. The mysterious chapter titles where you're just like, what the fuck? And then hindsight comes along once you finish the chapter and just clobbers you over the head. 
Mm -hmm. It's like the opposite of being smacked by Apollo's gift of prophecy. Getting smacked by hindsight. Mm. It suddenly clicked in Shi Lian's head. He put Yin Yu down and rose to his feet. The cursed shackle. He took the cursed shackle. If it wasn't important, Jun Wu wouldn't have taken it, and he had gone out of his way to remove the swollen, blood-filled, cursed shackle and bring it with him. Perhaps that thing hadn't just drained Yin Yu's blood. Perhaps it had imprisoned his soul. <sighs> Realizing this, Shi Lian left the beaten, bruised Chuan Yu Jen behind and dashed to the back of the palace of Qi Ying. But Jun Wu was no longer there. Shi Lian turned around and charged outside. The great avenue of the heavenly capital was cold and deserted, not a soul to be seen besides the expressionless guards standing watch over the once bustling great palaces of the gods. <clears throat> Ooh, pardon me. My throat has actually sounded much better than I thought it would today. But that was a little, whoa. <laughs> the great avenue of the heavenly capital was cold and deserted. Not a soul to be seen besides the expressionless guard standing watch over the once bustling great palaces of the gods. None of those guards cared about him, and Shi Lian didn't care about them either as he ran straight for the Palace of Divine Might. Sure enough, Jun Wu had returned here. He was seated upon the throne, gazing at Yin Yu's cursed shackle. The moment Shi Lian charged inside, he heard a strange growling noise. When he looked up, he saw the fetus spirit clinging to the magnificent ceiling with all four limbs. That's creepy as shit. It was scuttling around. Oh, mm -mm. it was scuttling around upside down like some cold blooded creature. An incredibly disturbing sight. I don't know why that takes me back to the exorcist, but it does. She doesn't crawl around on the ceiling in the original exorcist. She doesn't crawl around on the ceiling, but she does have like a stairs moment. Where she, like, crab walks downstairs. I don't know why that brought me there, but that's where I'm at right now. It's not a great place to be. Let's move on. Whew. Even that wicked creature could now enter the Palace of Divine Might. It truly made one wonder. What would the heavenly officials who had struggled and failed for centuries to step into this hall think if they saw? Shi Lian marched over to the throne with one arm at the ready. What do you need? Jun Wu asked. Without another word, Shi Lian thrust out his hand to grab for the cursed shackle, but of course Jun Wu would not let him have his way. After failing for a while to seize the shackle, Shi Lian cried out angrily, What use do you have for it? Yin Yu isn't even a threat to you. He's completely insignificant in your eyes. Why did you say all that to him? What's the use in keeping that thing? Who says it's of no use? Jun Wu replied. It has made you this angry. Does that not prove it's actually very useful? Fuck this bitch. Like, just... Fuck this bitch. <sighs> he was like an adult who had placed a bowl of fruit on the table just out of reach of his child smiling cheerfully as he watched the child get up on tiptoe and grab for the bowl fruitlessly again and again, enjoying the child's anger and desperation and loud wailing. Shi Lian was going to go mad from fury. Are you insane? Shen Lei, that tone is rather disrespectful, Jun Wu said. Able to endure this no longer, Shi Lian cursed aloud. I'll show you some freaking respect. He began to swear. Every curse he'd uttered up to this point should have been aimed at the man before him, but his tirade was interrupted when his throat constricted, and he began to suffocate. 
She Lian's vision went blank. He clutched at his throat, his knees buckled, and he dropped to the floor to kneel at Jun Wu's feet. Jun Wu remained seated, petting the fetus spirit with calm composure. What, is that like his version of a cat? Like the villain cat, you know? Except for super special Jun Wu, it's a villain fetus spirit? You know? That's not the best mental image. His hand brushed through its sparse hair and caressed its smooth, round head. I didn't need the rest of that sentence, MXDX. I really didn't. I, I, I understood. He was petting the, like, I got it. You didn't need to <clears throat> drive it home like that. The fetus spirit seemed to be enjoying the treatment and cooed with strange cheer while dark energy oozed from its palms. Jun Wu gazed at Shi Lian's flustered face as he listened to his violent coughing. Shen Lei, I suggest you behave as you did before. A little more obedient. A little more respectful. That is the only way to avoid my anger. Do not forget, you are wearing one of these too. In fact, you are wearing two of them. Shi Lian's words were stolen by another fit of coughing. Y you He shot to his feet and glared at Jun Wu with red-rimmed eyes. I what? Am I despicable? Jun Wu asked. Shen Lei, do not forget that you were the one who asked for them. What a joke! How could he have known that the hell? How could he have known what the hell they really were back then? <sighs> I'm still fucked up about the fucking shackle. <clears throat> but it made him wonder. When the state preceptor saw him in the capital, when his face fell and he lunged at Shi Lian's neck, was he really trying to kill him, or had he been trying to remove his shackle? <clears throat> it was a long time before the cursed shackle on Shi Lian's neck finally loosened and let him breathe normally again. He gasped harshly, one hand reaching up automatically to the cursed shackle. But as he felt his neck, Shi Lian's fingers found something else. It was a very thin silver chain. The metal had once been cold, but his body had long since warmed it through. He'd been wearing it for so long now, after all. And hanging on that silver chain was a crystal clear ring. Shi Lian's shoulders immediately stiffened, and he gripped the ring tight. For some reason, his heart was pounding faster and faster, as if he had learned an incredible secret. Behind him, he heard Jun Wu speak. It is I. What is it? What? What did he mean? Shi Lian stuffed the silver chain back into his robes and turned around with a frown, only to discover that Jun Wu's comment wasn't directed at him. Jun Wu had two fingers raised and pressed against his temple. That posture. He was communicating with someone. Although he wasn't allowing any other heavenly officials in the heavenly capital to communicate via the spiritual array, those restrictions did not apply to him, and he could use it as he wished. After a pause, Jun Wu continued, It is nothing. Since the recent incident with the impersonated Earth Master, we have unearthed many of the spies and false personalities he planted within the heavenly capital. Considering all that has happened recently, we cannot afford any careless mistakes. All heavenly officials are being investigated, and the entire heavenly capital has been locked down. It is currently not open to the outside, nor is spiritual communication permitted, which is, of course, why you are unable to connect with anyone. Shilian panted lightly, then held his breath. He, it sounded like the one speaking with Jun Wu didn't know the situation in the heavenly capital, so he was lying to them as if everything was fine. And the excuse he used was perfectly appropriate. The aftershocks, after sharks? The aftershocks of the discovery of Blackwater's impersonation had rippled through the heavens, leaving an enormous mess in their wake. And it made sense to take cleaning it up very seriously. It was reasonable for the entire guard to be locked down on those grounds. Even if Shi Lian screamed and yelled, the person on the other end wouldn't be able to hear him, so he decided to watch and wait. After a while, a barely perceptible change flashed across Jun Wu's face. Oh? You wish to come to the heavenly capital? Of course, he replied warmly. The case this time is certainly important. You are most welcome if you have the heart to lend assistance. 
the other party was ac had actually volunteered to come help help in the heavenly capital? It would have been far more helpful if they had offered several hours earlier when everyone was definitely in need of aid, but this timing? The entire heavenly capital had already fallen and become a layer of demons. They, may, they might as well jump into a fire pit. Jun Wu had Jun Wu said a few more simple words and ended the communication. Straight away, Xilian questioned him, "Who's coming?" The Fetus spirit seemed to know that it was not a creature of light, so it quietly crawled away to hide in the shadows. Jun Wu, on the other hand, only smiled. Such impatience! You will see soon enough. He hadn't expected that. You're gonna go let me see them. You're going to let me see them, Shilian asked incredulously. Didn't you tell them that the entire heavenly capital is locked down and every heavenly official is being investigated? Of course, Jun Ru replied. But I should at least have some sh have a trustworthy. Ha, ha, ha. But I should at least have a trustworthy left and right hand. Something about the book had broken up tr trustworthy into a new line, and that just did a number on my brain. Ling Wen was technically still on the run, so she couldn't play the role publicly. Thus, the task fell to Shi Lian. Jun Wu studied him thoughtfully for a moment, then said gently, Shen Lei, just be good and cooperate. Do not bother with any silly tricks. I know you too well. I know everything that is on your mind. Jun Wu played absent-mindedly with the blood-filled cursed shackle. You said it yourself. Yin Yu was completely insignificant to me. Rather, all heavenly officials, no matter how grand, are insignificant in my eyes. You understand what will happen if you expose anything. So do not give anything away. Tidy yourself up. They will be here soon. Xu Lian didn't speak, but he did pick himself up off the floor, dust himself off, and tidy himself up. He walked over to stand at Jun Wu's side, just as he always had. Jun Wu approved of this. Just like that. Okay. While Jun Wu's threats were very defective, Xi Lian also noticed something. Jun Wu didn't seem to want whoever was coming to realize that the heavenly capital had fallen. This made Xi Lian even more curious who it was. Two incensed time later, several figures finally appeared before the Palace of Divine Might. There was a lady cultivator in green robes riding a burly black ox. A sword hung at her waist. She approached languidly with several farmers of all shapes and sizes in tow. The Rainmaster had come! Xi Lian was surprised. Based on how Jun Wu had been acting, or rather, the way he acted when his true motives were exposed, he would kill whoever stood in his way. He should have locked up anyone who approached the capital. So why was he treating the Rainmaster so carefully? But there was no way to know the answer to that now. The Rainmaster dipped her head toward them as she entered the Palace of Divine Might. Your Royal Highness, my lord, how do you do? Xi Lian pretended everything was fine and returned the greeting. Lord Rainmaster. He seemed polite and unfazed, but underneath, his mind was spinning. How could he communicate the real situation at the Heavenly Capital to the Rainmaster? It has been a long time since Rainmaster last visited the Heavenly Court, Jun Wu commented. The lockdown of the Heavenly Capital is rigorous, the Rainmaster commented. She sounded puzzled, and Jun Wu replied, Considering the progression of the Blackwater case, it is necessary. Over 50 heavenly officials have already been plucked from the middle court. It would be deeply troubling if there are yet more pawns planted in the upper court. I see, the Rainmaster said. The three of them chattled idly for a bit. That was when Xi Lian noticed that Jun Wu always covered for himself perfectly, whether he spoke truths or lies, without a single flaw to be found. It was genuinely amazing. Xi Lian wanted to warn Rainmaster, but he was afraid Jun Wu would notice and take it out on the other heavenly officials. He was also afraid to involve the Rainmaster herself, who had no idea who had no idea what was going on. His hands were tied. The Rainmaster didn't seem to didn't seem to notice that anything was unusual. She asked if there were any matters with which she could assist. 
Not at the moment, Junwoo replied. However, I'm sure there will be much need for your help once the investigation is complete. Then I will remain in the heavenly capital for the time being and await summoning, the Rain Master said. Junwoo maintained his smile. Shilian couldn't tell what he was thinking, but he still didn't shed the pretense, even at this point. A good plan. You have been absent from the capital for years, so take this chance to refamiliarize yourself. The Rainmaster residence has been empty for a while now. He has been for quite a while. The Rainmaster nodded and unhurriedly began to leave. Shilian knew that she would be monitored from the moment she left, which made her anxious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unexpectedly, the Rainmaster turned back around. Your Highness? Shilian's heart skipped. Does Lord Rainmaster have guidance to impart? Could she have fully noticed that something was wrong? Nothing of the sort, she replied. She, she, she replied. I can no longer pronounce any words ever anywhere. I've been away from the heavenly capital for so many years, so I've brought along some souvenirs. I thought I'd give you some. Would you be willing to receive them? Shilian hadn't expected anything like that. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Oh my god, this is like... This is like volume one's frequency of not knowing whether to laugh or cry. Jun Wu, of course, never accepted gifts. Oh, well, first is a, huh? Uh, thank you. But he smiled as he allowed the Rainmaster's escorts to enter. Shen Lei, Lord Rainmaster, wants to give you some presents. Why don't you accept them quickly? The way he said it that made Shi Lian sound like a young child being taught his manners, a guest had come to visit and brought a gift for the child, and the elder was prompting the child to receive it and thank them. Shi Lian had no choice but to do so. A farmer approached and presented a very tightly wrapped package with both hands. Shi Lian, Shi Lian uttered a casual thanks and took the package distractedly, and then, suddenly, his expression changed as if he'd noticed something important. He had his back to Jun Wu, so his face should have been hidden, but Jun Wu still asked, what kind of gift is it? Once the rain master saw that he had taken the gift, she cupped her hands in courtesy and smiled. Nothing valuable. They are but some local specialties grown from earth. There, if there is nothing else, I will take my leave. Please, Jun Wu said. With that, the Rainmaster tugged at the black ox and leisurely set off with her escorts toward the residence she hadn't used for many years. Hugging the present to his chest, Shi Lian was about to leave as well when Jun Wu called him. Hold it. Yeah, speaking of hold it. Yeah, we got there. Okay, so hang on. Let me see if... Uh, yikes. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Shilian was about to leave as well when Juwu called to him. Uh, ba -da -ba. I think. This is probably a good place to start. Start. Stop. I believe so. We are like in the middle of things, but this is, we're come, we're in the second half of this volume now. Yeah. We're, we're a little over the halfway point. One mage, ju ju I fi the, finish the, oh, oh, all, all, all right. Hang on, hang on. <clears throat> Backtrack a sentence. Hugging the present to his chest, Shi Lian was about to leave as well when Jun Wu called to him. Hold it. Shi Lian stopped like his feet had been nailed to the ground. Come back, Jun Wu ordered. Shi Lian returned to the hall and turned to look at him. Jun Wu stepped off the throne and took the package from Shi Lian's tight grip. Now you may go. Paranoid as expected, he confiscated the Rainmaster's gift immediately. Shi Lian glanced at him, then wordlessly returned to his palace of Shanlei. 
Julien was restless and, and paced back and forth in the hall. He didn't know all how long it had been when he suddenly heard a bright, clear voice. Your Highness? Julien whirled around. A young man wearing ragged clothes and a bandana tied around his head had somehow hopped onto the windowsill without him noticing. He stood perched there with a playful grin gr directed at Shilian. Shilian was overjoyed. He dashed for two steps before remembering that this young man had just called him Your Highness, which made him stop in his tracks. He asked a little uncertainly, Are you San Lung? San Lung? The young man laughed heartily heartily and hopped down from the windowsill yanking off the scarf as he did as his black hair tumbled down he tied it up swiftly revealing a pale handsome face underneath one that was completely different from a few moments before it was a face that shi lian knew very well indeed hua chung twirled the headscarf leisurely inside Gaga, my dear Gaga, this time seeing you is as hard as ascending to the heavens. And that's where we'll end for tonight. <sighs> Finally, we get some. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, okay. That's where we're at. We're at the top of page 166. And that is where we are stopping for today. A nice note to stop on, considering everything. Whew. Oh man, he's got, he's there. I wanna know how it, we'll find out on Wednesday, I guess. Yeah, we are, let me double check and see how so that we can get an idea of like how many sessions are left. We're on 166. The total page number. Why can I not handle this book right now? Um, I think this was one of the shorter one. Oh, by a little bit. Just by a little bit. Um, this volume's only just a little bit shorter. Wait, 36, 166. We're like 170-ish pages away from the end so we should have another um uh four sessions there should be another four streams so yeah then we'll finish it wednesday of next week should be uh should be when we actually get to the end of this in case you were curious that's terrifying because then all we have left is volume eight which is the ending and <laughs> Oh, uh, we lost in you. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot went on in 50 pages. Holy shit. But I feel like that's just gonna, that's just, that's just the new pace. That's just what's happening now. That's just what we get to deal with. This is what happens when you get towards the end of, of MXTX. Just, it's just a constant. Good Lord. Well, since I'm late i am late in finishing this evening so i have to go ahead and run off but i will see you guys on wednesday for another 50 pages and who in the meantime take a couple deep breaths go uh, walk around someplace take care of yourself and i will see you at the same time hopefully on time obviously apologies again on wednesday I love you all very, very much. You have a wonderful rest of your day, week, night, what have you. And I will see you on Wednesday. Bye, guys.